All right, cool. Uh, hi, everyone. Uh, thank you for joining and welcome to the Prometheus and Ecosystem Call August 2021. Uh, pretty chill and relaxed as we kind of just discussed uh, lots of people on vacation, which is good. Um, but we do have some updates. And uh, yeah, before we before we get into those, um, I just want to point out that we are a CNCF meetup. So um, the CNCF code of of conduct uh, applies. So be nice and excellent to each other um, as always. And yeah, let's let's get started with the first update that uh, Frederick wants to tell us about. All right, so the uh, Prometheus 2.29 release train has started um, on uh, last Friday, finishing up uh, on Monday, we released the first uh, release candidate which uh, we had a couple of uh, minor bugs in there, but Julian and I uh, decided that uh, we would cut another release candidate, which happened this morning. Um, so please go ahead and test that. And the kind of highlights uh, from, from this release um, are we've got a new uh, service discovery for Kuma. This is an XDS-based uh, service discovery. And I think Kuma is a... Um, service mesh. Um, we've got a new PromQL function present over time that will, um, Julian, correct me if I'm wrong, but that will essentially uh, tell you, get, give you return ones for every uh, point in time where the series uh, has, was active. Um, <clears throat> then uh, you can now also pass um, the feature flag um, that the main Prometheus binary has to prompt tool, which is useful if you, you know, um, are using one of the experimental PromQL features um, so that you can actually, uh, you know, make sure that the um, PromQL queries or something are uh, correct as well with prompt tool, uh, even if you're using the, um, the experimental features. And my personal favorite from this release is something that, that I think is a long overdue feature you can now click and drag in the graph uh, to zoom um, in on time. So I think that's a that's a pretty um, pretty exciting feature. Um, and I think this shows once again like how awesome community is, right? Because even though I've kind of wished for this for a very long time, someone just went ahead and did it. I think that's a pretty amazing thing about open source. Of course, there are a lot of smaller enhancements to many of the service discoveries, lots of uh, bug fixes, but I won't get, go into all of those in detail. So yeah, release candidate out, uh, one went out this morning, uh, please test and um, performance test, uh, performance benchmarks already look pretty good. So if there are no further bugs that we discover, then we'll probably do the final release on Monday. That's it. Thanks everyone. Awesome. Yeah. And super nice to, to hear about community being involved and contributing long overdue features. I think we've all been to the point where we needed to zoom into the time frame and then like use the move backwards button and stuff. Yeah. Uh, awesome. Uh, looking forward to the release. Um, and we want to talk about another release, which is uh, an upcoming alert manager release, Julian. Yes, yeah, so I will uh, probably cut an alert manager release this week or the start of uh, next week. The main feature uh, is the SNS, uh, AWS SNS receiver, which was passed for a very long time by the community and uh, which should make into a, a release hopefully by next week. And the second thing is that we will also have a small helper in IAM tool to, uh, to test your templates. Uh, independently, so you don't need to create false alerts and that kind of thing to test your templates anymore. Uh, this should be like easier for the people who want to see upfront what uh, the templates will look like. Nice, good improvements there as well. Um, awesome. Yeah, if you have any questions, um, feel free to write them in chat or leave them in the in the doc. And I think with that, we are moving on to ecosystem and community updates. Um, Bartek wrote something down on a new Thanos release, which is exciting, so please take it away. Yes, I just wanted to share a couple of new things that are coming 
are already available in Thanos uh, 22, 022. Uh, just know that, I mean, shout out to, uh, to maintainers. I was literally like on holidays and I literally, literally all of the work was done by, by the maintainers team. So I'm super happy that team is growing there. And uh, um, yeah, if you want to help, um, you're welcome as well. So in this release, um, Kind of highlighting stuff uh, is a new receiver mode. So right now you can, we kind of split functionality receiver into two different functionalities. One is routing. Uh, so this is the one that allows you to route the remote rise to the proper uh, ingester. And then you have ingester, which is only responsible for um, receiving the data and building these DB blocks and so on. It's really now looking similar to Cortex distributed in distributor and ingester. And we, for the same reasons we did that uh, to enable like more scalability and like more flexibility of changing things without reloading ingester. So there are lots of kind of new uh, deployment models possible. We don't block the old method where you have both router and ingester in one receiver. So you can totally use that, but you might want to check this, um, this, this kind of cool split if you want to scale even more. Um, additionally, we added like uh, exemplar support. So there is in-memory storage in the receiver. You can query exemplars, you can send them using remote write. So this is pretty, pretty amazing. And, and, and we hope to have more exemplar support in the future. Um, Azure client object storage over, uh, overhaul. Um, so check that if you, if you are having problems with Azure, now we have like totally fresh implementation, lots of the optimizations um, and uh, Along the optimizations, we have kind of a long awaiting feature in Thanos where you can do the offline deduplication. So it means that we always deduplicate on the query time. When you have, for example, Prometheus replicas, you can transparently uh, deduplicate that into you know, one set of, of series. And it was only, on, always done on the query time. Now you can, do, you can set Compactor to do it offline for you. And it was always possible, but... Um, we didn't uh, support like the Prometheus replica, but we, we have like a different vertical compaction logic. Now it should be safe for Prometheus replicas as well. So if you want to try it, you just need to enable that on compactor and uh, mind that there are some edge cases where Prometheus replicas um, can cause some kind of uh, weird, um, you know, the duplication artifacts is very rare, but there are some kind of minor issues around that, uh, but most of the cases it should be safe to run and it will, you know, reduce, um, you know, a, a lot of effort of, 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 you have essentially like twice less data, for example, to serve. And last but not the least, we have all our YAML flags that you can specify for object storage for any other configuration in Thanos. Now you can uh, substitute environment variables. So if you use secrets there, it's, it's much easier nowadays and we allow, I mean, we enable it everywhere. So it's kind of easy to use. Yeah. Good stuff, good stuff. Yeah, check that out and let the Thanos community know if there's anything. Um, I think there's also, not. I don't think, I know there is a Thanos Slack channel on the CNCF Slack. So also get in, involved in there. Um, awesome. Do any participants have any questions? Any, anything you want to ask, feel free to write in the chat or in the doc. In the meantime, I have a first question, but please go ahead and ask a, a question if you have one. Um, so the present over time function is a kind of like the inverse of what the absent function that usually is used as uh, an alerting mechanism as well, where like if a metric is absent, um, it is, it is firing, but like the present over time is like the inverse, just counting over time as well, like, like increasing each sample, right? Uh, it is not because uh, absent over time will create an artificial metric as a result that will only contain the selector that you have in the, in the absent over time parameters. Well, this one will return one for every series that was present. So okay. this is really like uh, the it is uh, like the group the group function that we have the group aggregator that we have in PromQL but over time, but group over time was not really like really logical as a name so we picked present over time. 
you can see it more like a count over time that just returns one. Right. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that clarif clarifies things. Thank you. But if if you have a better name, no, it's time now or never to to change it before Quickly we get before the final release. Thing. Right. Yeah. If if anyone does, I think it's a good name. So, um, but if anyone comes up with something better, then just was curious how it relates to the absent function. Yeah. I only my only question is like, is it Easter present over time or Christmas present over time? <laughs> Yeah, I'm just joking. Yeah. Oh, la, la, la. <coughs> dry. <laughs> you have lost one. Quick, point. someone <laughs> ask, ask a question. <laughs> Is there anything anyone wants to ask? Going once, going twice. And if there isn't anything, then we can wrap up and see you in September. Um, hopefully more people will be back from vacation, but I do think it's good to see so many folks not showing up and being actually taking some time off. <laughs> All right then. Uh, yeah, enjoy and see you in September. Thank you for Thank joining. you, Julia. Thank Bye. you, Julia, for the up of uh, the SNS receiver, by the way. You're welcome. Awesome. All right, see you then. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, everyone. Bye.